ends can move. Here ends could not move, here ends could move. And therefore, uh, so delta x would not be zero. And therefore, we additionally impose that the space derivative, this x prime mu or del sigma of x mu vanishes. And so our purpose would be served. We want these boundary conditions to disappear and that we can achieve. Now you can also have mixed boundary conditions. So on one hand, you can have Neumann, on one hand, you can have Dirichlet or vice versa. At one end, Dirichlet and one end, Neumann boundary conditions. So this is what is the, uh, we would not recap that one of them, uh, I would just mention the statement that the uh, Neumann boundary conditions, they preserve the point chi invariance. However, the Dirichlet boundary conditions, they do not preserve the point chi invariance. Okay, so uh, that may be enough. So this is essentially a, a, a short recap of our, uh, of our basic ideas. And so if you like, I will erase some of this and So the our equations of motion are zero equals to minus del tau square plus del sigma square x mu and this is also equal to minus mu x mu double dot plus x prime double dot equals to 0. And we see that here also we have boundary terms, here also we have boundary terms and the time boundary terms vanish on their own at the infinite time boundaries. However, the boundary terms corresponding to the space coordinate sigma, we make them vanish. Okay, so that's the idea. And so the boundary terms, they always give us, they do not contribute anything. And this is uh, actually, uh, this would go a long way in sort of defining the DP brains or the uh, D brains. For example, in D1 brain, which is the string, D2 would be a membrane, D3 would be a three dimensional volume, and so on. So, using how many conditions we are using, uh, Dirichlet or Neumann boundary conditions, that would actually define. So, for example, for the D1 brain, and for the D1 brain action, you have uh, 1 plus 1. Uh, this is the number of Neumann boundary conditions. So, for a DP brain action, this is P plus 1. Uh, Neumann boundary conditions and the remaining are Dirichlet boundary conditions. Okay. And the same thing here uh, plus 
Vymění. We will come back to it more properly, little bit later. Okay. So uh, that means this these boundary conditions uh, they would play a crucial role in defining different kinds of deep brain actions. Okay. All right. So now we go a little bit further from here and. Uh, let me just follow the sequence that I have here. Uh, let me come back to our expression for the P alpha beta. And we remember that these are the equations of motion that we obtain by the variation of x. But prior to this, we have already considered the equations of motion following from the variation of the auxiliary field h alpha beta right so in that we get t alpha beta equal to 0 okay we have done it already so what is t alpha beta this is g alpha beta minus one half of h alpha beta into h gamma delta into g gamma delta and here let us evaluate some of the just a trivial uh, tutorial exercise let's calculate what is t 0 0 so t 0 0 is g 0 0 minus 1 half h 0 0 into this expression which is h dot g so let me write it separately. This would give me four terms H00, G00 plus H11, G11 plus H01, G01 plus H10, G10. All other terms would be would drop out in any case because you can write down all other terms, but because this H is a two dimensional matrix. So we have these four and out of this we can again this is H00 this is here this is minus 1 H11 this is plus 1 and this and this these two terms already drop out so we have here these two terms and this would then be G0, 0, uh, okay, D0, F mu, D0, uh, D0, F mu, maybe that's the only term left in G0, 0, minus 1 half into H0, 0, H minus 1 into this H minus 1 into g 0 0 is then g h mu and del 0 x mu plus h 1 1 is 1 into g 1 1 is del 1 x mu del 1 x mu right yes so uh, this h equals to x mu dot whole square minus minus plus one half and this is going to be minus x dot square plus this is going to be x prime square okay and so this is then equal to one half of h mu dot x mu dot and this is also plus one half x prime mu x prime mu. okay and this actually uh, 
if you like I can take one half common so this is and this as you know T0 0 is the Hamiltonian T0 0 is the Hamiltonian or the canonical Hamiltonian which we would calculate again uh, using the Legendre transformation and driving this so a little bit later in a short while later and so one thing to be noticed here is that T0 0 also vanishes <coughs> identically this is to be treated as a constraint on the theory okay we will drive more of them uh, in fact T11 would come out to be the same T11 would be G11 minus one half H11 into this thing would remain the same so minus x dot square plus x prime square because this this object is independent of that right this gamma delta gamma delta okay <coughs> the indices are repeated yes so right now we have no assumptions on the coordinates uh, on the x u no not uh, yeah actually that's separate right now not mm. right now not but all of them would be considered at the same time later. So the Hamiltonian is uh, called in that way. Uh, yes, this is this is the usual canonical Hamiltonian. Okay, this eventually actually it turns out to be the Hamiltonian because of T zero zero. Okay, and also if you calculate it separately, we, I will do it in a few minutes. So here we just notice that this guy 